All right. Hey, this is Randy with Schulenberg Realty, and I'm here with Matt Roder with Cross Country Mortgage. And uh, Matt uh, has been with Cross Country now for how long? Uh, it's been um, it's been uh, this is my fourth year. Fourth year, and you had a banner year last year, right? You and your That's team. Correct. Yeah, That's and you always do great work cross country, and especially the Matt Roder team has a great reputation. <laughs> so uh, we appreciate any chance we have to uh, have you on one of our transactions. So uh, I'm bringing Matt on today because he made me aware of something their company just brought back, and uh, it'll catch anybody's attention because it says your clients could close in as few as 10 days. So I'm going to bring up a flyer. Uh, I'm going to share my screen real quick here. So we can find this. Here it is. So hopefully you can see this. So this is who you're, uh, this is who we have on today. So Matt Roder, uh, you're out of Batavia and uh, cross country has, I think, uh, offices throughout the Chicago area and probably other states. Nationwide. So what, uh, what areas can you do business in Matt? We can actually help in all 50 states. Okay, so we got clients in Florida, we have clients other places, you can help out with those, Wisconsin, Indiana, so right over the borders of some of our areas. That's correct. All right, so we'll be sure you have uh, Matt's contact information when we're done, but we'll bring up this, uh, what was uh, brought to my attention today. So here it is, and I'm gonna let Matt take it away since this is his information that I might ask him some questions about it later. So Matt, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, well, thank you, Randy. Um, appreciate you having me on to talk about this. This is our answer to one of the most challenging issues that buyers are having in today's market. Um, you know, it, what we're seeing um, is an extreme shortage of inventory, all time lows, and demand is just as strong as it's ever been. And it's great in when you're selling a home, but when you're a buyer, not so much because you're competing. Uh, there's bidding wars on every property. Buyers are having to offer above asking on almost every offer. Um, it can be stressful. Yeah, that's yeah. true. We just, we just had one yesterday, an example too, mm -hmm. where we put in an offer on a property in Rickton Park. So, uh, uh, I think we were 11,000 over asking price mm -hmm. and my client was sure they would get it. And we just received word this morning that we didn't. Didn't get it. So I think a program like this could have worked to our advantage if my client was using it uh, because it would have shortened the time that they could have closed instead of having, so today's February 17th, instead of having March 30th on the contract closing date, we could have really sped that up if that was more important to the seller to get the deal done. That's right. That's right. And that, and we don't know what's important to the seller. Correct. But um, this is just us trying to give the buyer as much ammo as they can get. Um, a lot of, there's been a lot of cash uh, printed and handed out over the last couple of years. So there's a lot of people out there that can make cash offers. And yeah. if you're competing against those people, then it's really, really hard when you're getting a mortgage because the sellers would typically prefer to have that cash as more of a, a, a burden to hand. Um, so, but with the typical mortgage process, uh, historically, the way that it works is you talk to the lender, you give them some documents, they run credit, they do the review and they give you the pre-approval letter. Um, that pre-approval letter is has historically been enough to get you in the property, get you to make an offer. And, 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 and in other markets, that's been enough to get the deal done. But because of the, because of the situation we find ourselves in, a pre-approval letter is just, it may not be enough anymore. Um, right. So what this allows us to do is do most of the work up front. When, and I say most of the work, I'm talking about things like sending the file to the underwriter. So we take those income documents, the bank statements, the credit report, the application, 
we send everything to the underwriter before the buyer finds a house and have them underwrite income assets credit, which is typically done in a different market. That's typically done after you go under contract. So we're doing it all before. Right. So by doing it before, we speed up the time frame so that when that buyer then finds a house, they can make an offer. And all we need are the things that pertain to the property, which would be the appraisal, home insurance, a title report. And that is, and that's basically it. So and all those, can, all those things that are out of control of the buyer, except for the homeowner's insurance. So they need to get on top of that. That's correct. Um, and we would typically in, in this fast track situation, order a rush appraisal, which means that, you know, we're essentially um, incentivizing the appraiser to go out there quicker and get to the front of the line for our client so that right. we can try to get that closed. And so it does too, it doesn't just speed up the time um, because timing is, the timing being able to close quicker could be a benefit to the seller, but even if it's not, being able to make an offer and say to that listing agent and to that seller that my clients are not just pre-approved, they're approved. An underwriter has reviewed their credit and income and assets. Here's the letter. This says that they're fully approved. That can make the offer a lot stronger. It can make the seller a lot more confident about accepting that buyer's offer, which could be enough to win the deal. And maybe it's, maybe it's enough to even win the deal with a little bit lower of an offer than what someone who's just pre-approved might be able to offer. So right. it's kind of somewhere between a pre-approval and a cash offer. So how long does that process typically take then when you get everything done ahead of time? Obviously the appraisal is going to be rushed and the title and the insurance that the buyer will take care of. So you're looking at 30 days, 15 days, uh, once the uh, once your client gets the information to you that they need to yeah. get, once they get the information to us before they have the property, um, it can be anywhere from two weeks to four weeks. To okay, so I, so I so I have a, so anybody listening to this, you have you're looking at maybe taking advantage of uh, buying your first home, second home doesn't matter, but you're going to do that the spring or the summer. So they should be contacting you at least two to even four weeks before they are going to start looking so they can get all this wrapped up with you. And then they're just mortgage ready, right? They're just prepared, they're ready to go. They don't have to worry about anything on their end except maybe updating documents. Is there a time limit to how long those documents are good for? Yes, documents are typically good for 90 days. Okay. So, you know, for timing this correctly, um, you know, we can start maybe a month before you're going to start looking. All right. And that way, it's not the end of the world if documents expire. If we have to get an updated bank statement or pay stub. Right. So be it. But this at least allows us to get the letter in hand to give the buyer the ammunition of saying that they're fully approved. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just our buyers need everything they can get in this market. And, yeah, they do. Uh, you know, and a lot of lenders won't do this because it, it's resources that they're spending. Um, you know, we get we do a lot of pre-approvals throughout the year, and not all of those buyers end up buying anything. And so, this, right. in order for the lender to do this, they have to be willing to put forth the resources. Um, and when maybe it's not going to result in a closing. Um, yes, because uh, so a typical pre-approval is really you or somebody in your staff just gathering information and coming up with a, you know, maybe an automated decision that's not going directly to the end writer, getting everything done. So it is taking up resources that you typically uh, would reserve for somebody who has a contract in hand. That's correct. Yeah, so that's great. That's a that's a phenomenal thing you guys are doing. So. Anything else you want to talk about this program? Um, that pretty I much think sums it up, right? It pretty much sums it up. You know, you're essentially, you're just doing more upfront as the buyer. It doesn't cost the buyer anything to do this. Um, so there's really no reason not to. That's a great um, point. We just wouldn't, as a lender, we wouldn't want to do it unless the client was serious. 
So right. this program is probably not meant for someone who is maybe going to buy, but maybe not till next year. This is meant more for someone who's serious. They want to buy a house this spring. They know they want to buy a house. They just are having a really tough time with the normal process because of so much competition from other buyers out there. Yeah, or they haven't even experienced yet, but we're giving, I mean, we're giving you really, you know, any, any future buyer that's listening or watching to this, we're giving you an opportunity to get ahead of the game. Right. So it can be very frustrating. We've had clients where we have submitted eight different offers on eight different homes over a period of 30 days. And it's that ninth one that we finally get, mm -hmm. but because there's that much competition. And this year, I think Zello just came out with a report, Matt, you probably are aware of that, but the appreciation in this market is still going to be very competitive and in the Chicago land market, it's still going to be up, I think another 11 to 13% even in values, depending on what area that you're at. So it's still very competitive, lack of inventory. Uh, we have strategies on our end, of course, as, as real estate broker on how we can put your uh, you know, give you an advantage and give you an edge over others. But this is one tool using uh, the program that Matt's company has to offer that's going to be a real key thing for you if you want to have even a higher up uh, in the game. And so, Matt, is this program available for conventional, FHA, VA, uh, any peculiar programs, maybe like an IDA program? Uh, maybe you can explain what that is to those that don't know. Um. This program would not be available for any IDA loans. Okay. Um, and what are IDA loans real quick? So IDA, IDA stands for IHDA, which is a- Illinois Housing Development Authority. Right? Illinois Housing Development Authority. It's a state funded grant that is for first time home buyers. And it basically, um, you know, their programs are, they're they they're always changing their programs. Right. Yeah, you don't need to go into specifics, but just in general, so they, can they can provide. You know, your grant you get a grant from the state, yep. and that grant may or may not have to be paid back. Um, some of their programs they're forgivable. Uh, some you pay them back over a certain period of time. The ones that are forgivable are typically over a five year period where you have to stay in the property for at least five years, mm -hmm. and then it's fully forgiven. Um, you would have to occupy the property for that five years. It's only on principal residences, um, first time I, home buyers. I, I always say, talk, you know, when I have a first time buyer and they might be a candidate for that, I always say, talk to the loan officer. I'll give you the most recent updated information on that, what's available. So, uh, so, but that's not on this program. So I know we're trying to keep, keep in line of what we're doing here. So on the fast track, you're looking at just conventional FHA, so Maybe. that is a good question. I know that we've changed our guidelines on whether we can do this for FHA. I don't think we were doing them for government loans okay. like FHA and VA, but I do believe that we are now. Um, okay. So and I can get and, back to you. Yeah, in all fairness to you, <laughs> this email just came to me this morning when we're recording <laughs> this this afternoon after you've had a busy day and I've had a busy day. So. Right when they're just bringing it back, you don't have all the details, but it's just good to know you need to talk with the law officer. So talk to Matt when you have questions about financing and he will let you know the current. And if he doesn't know, he'll, he'll get you the current guidelines if it's applicable and appropriate to, to you. That's um, right. Yeah. So Matt, anything else you can tell us about you and your company, your team? Why would one of my clients choose you over the hundreds and probably thousands of other loan officers that they could choose from or these ones that are you know hitting them online when they submit something they get all the all these people so why what what's special about you Matt? Uh, is it a sparkling personality is that uh besides that we all, we already know that. that we know you do a great job we know you, <laughs> we know you deliver on what you promise so these are all good things um you know having the right lender is super important and um, it's not until you, you, a lot of clients don't realize that until after they've had the wrong lender, right? Yes. Um, but having the not right lender can be a very painful, very stressful process. Um, 
some of the things you're looking for in a good lender or you're looking for someone who has experience, someone who has been doing this for a long time, who understands mortgage guidelines. Um, uh, we have a team that, um, that works directly with us. Um, not all loan officers do. Some loan officers share operation staff, right. which can be a problem because then you don't really have control over how quickly your clients get serviced. So we have two processors on our team that work just for us. And there's no other loan officer that's giving that business that's gonna take away from our clients' needs. Um, so that allows us to do things quickly. It allows us to strategize, to focus on our clients' needs. Um, you know, our rates are competitive. Um, we have access to pretty much every program you know, we, we are what you call a correspondent lender, which means that we're shopping for the client, finding the best program for them. A lot of banks nowadays will have what's called overlays, which means that, you know, they might be doing conventional or government loans and those conventional and government loans have their own guidelines, but then the bank puts guidelines on top of those guidelines. And right. we don't have those extra guidelines. So we're strictly going based off of Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, FHA VA guidelines. And, and I'll say if you, know, if you haven't experienced that as a consumer, uh, you would really appreciate that you know, going in. Uh, and this, is why, this is one of the reasons why we have people like Matt and, and others that we've kind of identified as go-to loan officers. So when you come to us and you're looking for somebody and you want suggestions, Matt is one of those that you're going to hear about because we want the good loan officers, you know, we funnel them down. So we're, we're down to those that we know do good work. We know deliver. We know they're with a company that has your best interest in mind. Uh, somebody's going to collect your interest when, <laughs> you know, when you make those payments every month. No lender is ever the lowest in interest rate. You're not going to be a high. I mean, there, you know, there's, it is what it is on any given day and different companies will govern that internally based on many times just the capacity to do a good job servicing the clients. Mm -hmm. So shopping just for rate is never a great idea. And many times you get what you pay for. And a lot of the frustrations we've had with some of our clients is when they've already come to us pre-approved, they're not willing to consider another source that we know locally that does great job and delivers. And uh, the, also that the title companies locally know, the attorneys locally know. Uh, they love it when they see Matt or his team on a transaction because they know it's in good hands. But when they come already pre-approved with a name they got on the internet or somebody just doesn't have the experience or is not with that type of company, that's where we've seen a closing start at 10 a.m. in the morning on one day and by 4.30 in the afternoon, it still is not closed. Clients have left, gone to lunch, come back, then they leave, and maybe the next day it gets funded. And that's happened a couple times. I'm not going to name the lender, <laughs> but it's a nationwide lender that has, uh, I think people, they can take people's, uh, you know, hold people's funds, and you can have a debit card and a credit card with them. And, you know, but they're, they, uh, it's not the, it's not the company that overall you're going to want. You know, there's exceptions to everything, but you know, it's good to take suggestions on people that are trusted or local that, that we know have done a good job from attorneys to loan officers yeah. and the like. Yeah. And since, you know, since this whole conversation started around the topic of giving our buyers an advantage in, in this competitive industry, it's super, even the, the listing agent is looking at who the lender is. So yeah. if you're a listing agent and it's your client, you're reviewing all the offers. And one of those things you're reviewing is who is the lender for this buyer? That alone could make a difference. So if you, if you come with an offer and your lender is your bank who, you know, everybody mm -hmm. thinks that it's going to be easier with their bank. It's never right. easier with your bank. They think, well, I bank there, they have my money. It's just, it's, it doesn't work like that. It's never easier, right? I've, li I've literally gone into a local bank Nationwide Bank, but locally in Huntley, Illinois. That bank's no longer there, by the way, but I've gone in there with my client to sit down with the loan officer. I knew more than that loan officer knew, and I'm a, I'm a real estate broker. I used to be in lending, but that's a while ago. 
you know, I was just, I couldn't believe how they were being treated and the kind of answers my client was getting. Thankfully, I was there to ask real good questions. But we walked away from that and my client who thought they were going to use that bank ended up using a referral from us. And they've refinanced now once or even twice through that same loan officer because they did such a good job. Right. Yeah. So, and how many times you have a client who doesn't take your advice, uses their bank, and then after it closes, they're like, oh, Randy, I should have listened to you. Next time I'll listen to you. I mean, I, I can't tell you. I did, I did have one last year say, I wish I had listened to you. Mm -hmm. They fooled me once. I had the same bad service the last time I used them. I should not have used them. I should have listened to you. And uh, right. yeah, we just, we do the best we can. We're not perfect, you know, but we do right. the best we can to find the right partners for our clients because we do absolutely all we can to help our clients have the best experience possible. And you right. go on Google and you search reviews for Matt and his team, you search reviews for us, you'll see what others say about us. We're not bragging about us or talking about how well we do things. We let others talk about that as they experience it through the process. That's right. So, That's right. And, you know, you know, lenders who communicate, you know, there should never be a reason not to communicate to your clients. You know, um, you know, when you send your loan officer a document, you know, they, they shouldn't, you know, ask you a week later for that same document, you know, little things like that. Um, and another thing that I'll, that I'll say is one more thing about us is that I can't tell you the last time that we gave a pre-approval letter and that buyer went under contract and they didn't end up closing. Now, a low appraisal or something like that, you know. Seems out of your control, right? Out of, my, out of our control, you know, inspection issues. But assuming that everything was okay with the property and the buyer wanted to move forward and buy that property, every single pre-approval that we've given out uh, has, has ended up in a closing. And there is absolutely nothing worse than being a buyer, being under contract, and getting told a week before closing mm -hmm. that you don't qualify. And that's completely on the, eh, we've seen it before where, you know, the buyer does something like goes and buy a car before closing, which is a very bad thing. Don't do that. Right. But, you know, if, if you're the buyer and your finances look exactly the same, then that's just a loan officer not doing their job or they don't understand yeah. guidelines. They're not experienced enough to understand what it took to close. Right. So, you want a lender, you're going to be able to rely on the pre-approval and you want a lender where the other side of the transaction, the attorneys, the realtor, they see a face that they know they can rely on that pre-approval. And, um, and I don't think, you know, I know last year we were hundred percent, the year before that we were hundred percent, the year before that we were hundred percent. And I haven't gone back before that, but it's, I can tell you at least three years, we're at a hundred percent pre-approval to closing. And so that's something that I think is, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. So, yeah, that's amazing. You know, so, and that's what we experience too, when we have clients use our recommendations. So Matt, thank you for joining me for this little chat. It was a little longer than I expected, but I wanted people to get to know you a little bit better if they have a chance to, to see this. What is the best way somebody should get a hold of you or your team if they want to talk to you about mortgages? Yeah, um, email is good because uh, it's easy for me to track. Um, you can text me um, or a phone call as well, either way. But I would say email is definitely best or maybe just two different ways just to make sure that, um, that, uh, that you, know, you can get a hold of me quicker. So would that be right, Matt at myccmortgage.com? Yep. That's the correct email. And then our website's down there too. We have an online application. So if you go to the rotorgroup.com, okay. you can even just click the apply now button. And that would lead you to our online application. That's going to prompt you for all the information we're going to need. There's no cost to do that. And obviously anybody to look into buy a house should get pre-approved as early on in the process. And then, and then of course we can talk about doing the fast track appro approval if that's you know, a good fit for that particular buyer. Fantastic. Well, thank you again for uh, coming on and we'll do this again when you send me another uh, flyer and something special. 
uh, yeah. or we'll just do it just to update uh, later as the year goes on. So I know you're busy, so I'll let you go. But again, I appreciate you being a part of this. Yeah, thanks for having me on. And uh, it's always good to talk to you. And uh, I hope I could provide some useful information. So thank you. All right.